Good morning. How are you today? There we go. That's what I like to hear. You know, every time, how many people, does anyone have a motorcycle in here? Anybody? Okay, so <laughs> every time I tell my wife, I'm going to ride my motorcycle to church, every single time, it rains. And I'm like, come on, like, why can't it just be a nice day so I can ride my motorcycle? I'm one of those guys that, like, I'm a fair weather motorcycle rider. <laughs> It needs to be nice out. Um, but you know what? No matter what kind of day it is today, we get to we get to praise Jesus. We get to come together and, and I don't know, join hands with each other. We get to sing with each other. We get to hug. We get to smile at each other. And we get to enjoy the fact that the person next to us is serving and worshiping the same God we are. And it, there's just something, there's just something great about that, right? So... My name is Sean LaFortune. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm so excited to be here with you today. If you're new, super excited you're here. Anybody new in the house? No? Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Come on, clap for them. Bro, we are super excited you're here today. <laughs> so let's pray together. We have an announcement video, and then we get to worship together. So let's pray. Lord God, we are so excited to be in your house today. We're so excited to be able to stand next to our fellow brothers and sisters and love on each other and share with life together. Lord, I pray that today we would cast aside everything that we've been experiencing the last week, whether good or bad, and that we would step into your presence today and that we would lay everything at your feet and worship and give you glory and honor today. We love you so much, Lord. Prepare our hearts for what you have for us. Be with Pastor Jim as he speaks this morning. Just change us, Lord God. Change us and mold us and shape us and redefine us and, and that we would leave this place today closer and closer and closer to you, Lord. And everybody said, Amen, amen. Like I said, we have an announcement video, and then we get to worship. Welcome, Faith Harvest. My name is Sean LaFortune, and I am sitting with... Melissa, and myself and my husband, Ray, are the leaders of the greeting ministry here at Faith Harvest. And so whether you are from our main campus, East Campus, or our online community, we're so glad that you're here with us. If you are new here today, we are so excited you're here. There's a Connect card in the seat right in front of you. You could fill it out, bring it to the Connection Desk in the lobby. We have a gift for you, or there's a QR code in the back of the chair. You could scan with your phone and fill out the Connect card there. On Tuesdays, we have our Koinonia Young Adults Ministry. It starts at 7 o'clock in the student building. And then on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, we have Refuge Student Ministry that meets every Wednesday through the summer. Throughout the summer, we don't have any other programming except for the very first Wednesday of each month. Also coming up on Sunday, May 28th, we have our Meet the Family Lunch. We're going to have lunch right after church. Everyone's invited. If you want to attend, you can purchase your tickets online or at the welcome desk, but make sure you do so by May 24th to secure your spot. Are you looking for a way to get involved in our local community? We have local outreach opportunities coming up soon. We're excited to partner with some amazing organizations throughout the year. Raleigh Dream Center this summer, Sports Missions Outreach in the fall, and in the winter, we have our annual Christmas tour drive. Stay tuned for more details and how you can volunteer for these events. Also coming up is Centrifuge Summer Camp for Refuge Student Ministries. It's gonna be June 17th through the 21st. We have 20 spots available, so make sure you sign up. The price is $3.69 per student, so make sure you sign up, get your spot reserved, and we're gonna have a blast. Also, Falcon Summer Camp is coming up soon for children in grades first through fourth. The dates are June 18th through the 22nd. There will be canoeing, horseback riding, and worship every single night. 
For more info and to sign up, go online or go to our welcome desk in the lobby. And VBS is coming up soon as well, Vacation Bible School from July 17th through the 19th in our main campus and July 14th through the 26th in our East Campus. Save the dates and stay tuned for more details and information. Registration will be opening soon. Now for information about all these events and so much more, you can go to the Faith Harvest app, the website, or you can go to the welcome desk in the lobby. Now as we welcome the stage the Faith Harvest worship team, I want to remind you of Psalms 96 where it says, Sing to the Lord a new song, sing all the earth. That's right. So let's all stand together and worship the Lord together. Good morning, Faith Harvest. As we stand to our feet, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the presence of the Lord. Welcome you to worship. Welcome you to rejoice. Welcome you to praise. Welcome you to give God thanks for all that he has done. Join us as we pour out before the Almighty God.
There is 
Oh, the perfect Son of God in all His innocence. Here walking in the dirt with you and me. He knows what living is. He's acquainted with our grief. He's the man of sorrow, sign of suffering. There's a God who weeps, and there's a God who bleeds, and oh, praise the one who would reach for me, hallelujah, to the sun of suffering, oh, hallelujah, oh. Distant and remote, but you chased us down in merciful person to the sinner you were grace and to the broken you embraced and then
this time to you, Jesus. Don't let it be anything else but worship to your name, to your name, Jesus. God, can you worship him together? Declare the goodness of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The almighty, the all-powerful. Lord Jesus, who died on a cross for you. He is with you today. Whatever you walked into this room with, it is now time to lay it at His feet, to leave it with Him. We declare Your goodness, Jesus. We thank You, Lord, that collectively we are worshiping the audience of one, You, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who loves us, who has called us by Your name, who has that song just declared and we declared along with the lyrics that you are with us. Someone in here needs to hear this. Before you all got here and as the incredible worship team up here and the band were practicing, Carly's baby, little baby Wells was right down here in his stroller sound asleep too it's a good boy facing her but sound asleep now no one else was around at that moment baby wells could have woken up and can't imagine this with a baby but think about where i'm going with this if he would have woken up and went oh great no one's around, and I'm hungry. I'm going to have to find, figure out how to do this myself. I'm going to have to figure out how to feed myself. And ch Everyone's gone. I'm abandoned. But oh no. I was up in the booth watching and praying over the morning. Mama was up here. You kept seeing Mama do this. Mama watching while she sang. Mama making sure that that baby was, had all that that baby needs. Ladies and gentlemen, with your connection with the King of kings and Lord of lords, you are not alone. You are not abandoned in your situation. We don't have to figure out how to do things on our own anymore. Come on! Jesus is alive. He's seated on the throne of heaven, but he's watching you. He might even do give a, one of these every once in a while and get his eyes right on you and make sure you have everything that you need. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you that you are watching after us more closely. Even, I don't know how it's possible to have a love deeper than your children, but you love us deeper than we can even love our own children with the care and concern and needs. So, Father, bless us today. Thank you for bringing everyone in this room. Now, Lord, we pray that your anointing that we sense and your care and love for us would continue throughout this service. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you do me a favor? Yes, give him a great big hand clap of praise. Look around and see someone that you don't know and greet them in Jesus.
Amen. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Wow, it is great to see everyone. I am so honored to be up here today. Pastor Brad, our senior pastor, is at our East Campus in Middlesex, Nash County. Um, I know they are blessed to have him there and bringing the word there. And I get to be here today. I'm excited. Thank you all, friends, family. Give yourselves a great big hand clap for being here. I know a lot of times it takes a lot, but just to be here today. If you're joining us online, we are so grateful to have you and to be with us in this service. Praise God. Praise God. By the way, just another quick announcement to reiterate what was said on the video uh, just a little bit ago. Next Sunday is our family lunch. I like to eat. I don't know about you. But join us. It's for everybody. If you're a visitor, you've only been here a couple months, fill out the form. Go to the welcome desk. You can do it online. Fill out the form at the end when it's time to pay for your tickets. Type in guest, G-U-E-S-T, and we'll take care of your lunch. I give our visitors a great big hand clap. Welcome home. Family, we want you to come. It's only $10 for adults. Kids' meals are $5. Yes, Chick-fil-A on Sunday. That's that's a good thing. Uh, adults, we will be enjoying some Smithfield chicken and barbecue. Yes, good enough to sing. So you guys, uh, get your tickets um, online or um, out at the welcome desk. But join us for family lunch. We just enjoy being together and eating both at the same time. You're going to, I'm going to eat after church anyway. All right, then just join us. Get your tickets there. We'll, we would love to have you. You have to get them by Wednesday night. Uh, yeah, Wednesday so that we can get the order in and blessed to have you. So before we pray, I want, I'm excited today. Uh, we get to talk about Ruth, um, another women of wonder. Yes, we've been talking about women. How many women of wonder do we have in here today? Yes. I'm watching to see which men are not clapping for their woman of wonder. Men, are we grateful for our women of wonder? Yes! There we go. But I figured out, I'm a, I'm a guy talking about women of wonder, and the, the neat thing is the Lord actually prepared this a little bit because we um, had our women of faith growth group just go through the book of Ruth. So... As a guy who has been married for many years now, I'm not going to guess at 26, 7, oh my goodness, feels like yesterday. Um, for 27 years now, I am very smart in knowing that I should reach out to the women in my life. So I did reach out to those ladies and I said, hey, can you contribute to this message? So things that you're going to hear throughout this message, uh, women of faith, thank you for giving that information because they've been studying they studied for what 12 weeks miss kathy something like that yeah let's give our women of faith a great big hand clap so i've incorporated some of that in the message so let's go to the lord and find out what he has for us would you join me in prayer father i thank you that i get to be in church today with all of our friends and family god we thank you for bringing our guests to us thank you for those um, let them feel at home Father, I pray that you would now move in and through your word. God, get me out of the way. I can't do anything. I can't heal. I can't save. So, Lord, you're going to do the work. You're going to move in people's hearts. Prepare each heart in here. Men, women, boys, girls, everyone, Lord. Help me to deliver your word. Help Pastor Brad to deliver your word. Father, we thank you for the opportunity Thank you for the ladies who contributed to this as well, that paid attention to such a great study of the book of Ruth. We love you and praise you. Be with us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So God's story from Genesis through today is a comprehensive story. It didn't start in Genesis and end in a book, but still we're living it. You're living it today. You're living out God's story. And that comprehensive story has always included 
saving people out of brutal slave existence. Let me say that again. Delivering people out of brutal slave, brutally slave conditions and existence and then forming in them into the lives of free and obedient love. What I mean by that is we can see in the Old Testament the Jewish history of God delivering the Jews out of actual slavery and then set it, giving them formation through Him in love and obedience. Today, through Jesus, what we just worshipped and praised about, and, and through His cross, we now get to leave behind all the slavery conditions of this world, bondages, addictions, sin, bad relationships. We get to say no more of that. And we get to live in freedom. How many are grateful for freedom in the kingdom of God? Yes. We get to live in that free and obedient love. And guess what? God is with us. He's helping you and I live in that and be transformed in that. Now here's the deal though. When we stand up here, we are there and we're listening. When we read the Bible, we think about these incredible we can remember these incredible leaders like David, Moses, Abraham. Pastor Brad did such a good job talking about Queen Esther, a queen. And you have all these big personalities and big characters in the Bible. And we learn from them. But sometimes these large, impressive stories and people, I don't know about you, but sometimes make me feel left out. Because I'm like, well, I'm, I've never had a staff and put it out over the Red Sea and it opened for a group of people to go through. I don't know if you have, the, you might have a busy weekend. I don't know. But I didn't. Queen Esther, I didn't have the moment yet. Maybe God will open the door to be an official in the government and to either stand up for what she believed in or die. Big characters, big decisions. So sometimes it's hard to relate. And so we learn all this, uh, how to live through this star-studded cast in the kingdom of God. But here's the problem. Sometimes not only do I feel disconnected, but then the enemy goes, yeah, you're not a Queen Esther. You're not a Moses. You're just a Jim. And J-I-M, not G-E-M. You're not enough. You're unfit. You can't be part of God's incredible story because you're just not enough. You're not one of those great people we read about. But I have great news for you today. If you've ever felt the way I have or the enemy's ever told you you're not enough or you're unfit, I've got great news because we're going to jump into a story in the Bible that is so amazing because it has simple, very real very earthy people that tells an incredible story that God is proving that even us, we, very simple, very um, ordinary, if you want to use that word, people have our part in the kingdom of God, of God's great story. Anybody happy about that? I am. Praise God. Because I love in the words of um, Mark Batterson, he says this, God doesn't call the qualified. He doesn't wait for you to go, oh boy, you need to get your seminary degree. you got to get your act together. You've got to clean yourself up. And then I might qualify you to be my kingdom warrior. No, the good news is God does not call the qualified. God qualifies the called and everyone in here uh, all the way over are the called of God. Amen? You and I are a part of this story. So no one in here can just say, oh, well, I'm just going to check out because he's not talking about me when he reads this story. I am talking about you. And you will see yourself in this story. I see myself in this story because we count. We matter. Your life, my life, is full of the purpose of God. Your life, my life, and the choices we make are purposeful in and through the kingdom of God. Well, Jim, 
That might be something that you just say from the pulpit, but you don't know my life. It's such a wreck. It's such a mess. I know it because I know my own life. God will take you, raise you up, give you the freedom, give you the calling, and then start qualifying you to do great things in and through Him. So we open the story. By the way, this incredible story, while it doesn't even really talk about God, it's in the Bible, but God is only mentioned a few times. But the cool part is, is God is behind every one of the characters and in every scene of this story. Anyone ever had God working behind the scenes before and you didn't even see him or realize he was doing it? I hope so. That's part of the kingdom. And you're like, whoa, there he is. And that's what they discovered. It's one of those once upon a time stories. We open in chapter 1. There's a famine in the land of Moab where um, Elimelech and, had moved his wife and two sons and they married um, Moab uh, women from Moab. There's a famine. We don't know how, but sadly, very, very tragically, very traumatically, the husband, Elimelech, dies. His two sons, Milan and Kilion, die. We don't know if it's together. We don't know if it's just this famine was that bad. They, they die. They leave behind three women. Three wives that we're going to talk about. Naomi is the mother-in-law. Ruth and Orpah are the daughters-in-law. It's not where or um, Oprah gets her name. That's not the same name. Orpha, she is one of the daughter-in-laws. Ruth is a daughter-in-law. Naomi, they're left. Naomi isn't from Moab. She's a Hebrew. She's from Israel, she's from Bethlehem. Anyone ever heard of that name before? Remember that name? She's from Bethlehem. So all this tragedy happens. She says, I'm going to have to move home. I need to go be with my people. Tragedy. Tons of sorrow and tears. And we'll get to the girls in just a minute, but... I want to talk about Naomi because when she does return home to Bethlehem, she goes and every, all the family surrounding her, and she, is, she has a very deep, concerning heart, heavy, heavy, heavy heart. Anyone ever had that or you know someone like that? When they, they're greeting her, they're loving on her, and she says, no, 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 don't do that. My name, Naomi, means sweet. And I'm not sweet anymore. Y'all can call me Mara. And they knew what Mara meant. The reason they knew what Mara meant was because if you remember the time, I'm not going to take time to go to the scripture for this one, uh, but if you remember the Israelites were taken out and they were going to the land of milk and honey, and they get to where their water supply is, and they go to drinking, and it's in a place called Mara. And they try to drink it, and the water is bitter, and they can't drink it. It's making them sick. And they said, let's give up and go home. Moses, what are we doing here? He goes to God. He says, God, what are you doing? Where are you going? Where are you right now? And you know what God says? God, he says, here's your answer. Take this wood, take this tree, throw it in the water. And when he prayed and obeyed, write that down. When he prayed and obeyed, God showed up. Moses took that tree, threw it in the water, and did you know that supernatural tree? We don't know if God used the tree or he just supernaturally changed the water. We don't know how it happened, but it happened. That water became the greatest spring water that they had ever tasted, and it fed them, and it supplied their need. It quenched their thirst. When you are in a moment of bitterness, God wants someone in here to understand. He wants me to understand. 
That's when we pray. That's when we obey. That's when we do the right thing. And He will take that bitterness and suddenly He changes it. He gives a supernatural need that we have. Naomi went from tragedy to triumph over her life. But it took her identifying who she was in God's plan and God's purposes in her life. Now, this is bitterness. i got to talk about it for just a moment. Bitterness is a terrible, terrible thing. I love Job 21. Write these verses down. Put them on a window in your car somewhere, not in the front because you'll wreck. <clears throat> Someone needs this scripture. At the end of our lives, by the way, we're all doing this together. Young people, you've got a lot of decisions to make. Job says it like this, at the end of our life, one person, this type of person, dies in full vigor. How many want at the end of your life to be in full vigor? Completely secure. How many want at the end of your life to be completely secure, full of vigor, still acting like a 21-year-old? Amen? All right. And I love this part, at ease. I would just a little like a little bit of the at ease right now. At ease, completely secure, full of vigor. Job says that person, let's keep going, verse 24, that person is well nourished in body, bones rich with marrow. That's one person. But then he goes on to verse 25, another person. So you have two choices. You can be person A. And have your life full of all those beautiful things on your journey with the Lord. Or another person is in bitterness of soul. Ooh, ouch. Never having enjoyed anything good. Woo. Which one do you want to be? How many know people who are in bitterness of soul? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the, the view of what that type of bitterness looks like that Mara, or as we want to call her, Naomi, looks like. By the way, bitterness of soul is when you feel like there's no action left that you can take because everything is out of your control. You've just given up, and you just live in that bitterness. That's bitterness of soul. And there are some symptoms or some things that you can look at and you can test yourself. I have to test myself on these things. You want the, you want the symptoms of this? Here's number one, complaints. The person that is bitterness and soul is just full of complaining. Number two, they hold resentment and grudges. Sadly, number three, they generally focus on the dark side of life. Anyone identify some people? Hopefully not ourselves, but if so, I'm going to give you the way out. Because this is where Naomi was. She was bitter in her soul. She complained to God directly. She complained about God directly. Proven, number four, is that she, it's proven that when you're bitter in your soul, bitterness scientifically, medically, is proven to cause health problems. And guess where it stems from? Number five, a lot of times is not forgiving others. Letting go. Letting go. Okay, well, quickly, we're going to do the alternate of this, okay? How many want to see the light at the end of the tunnel? How many want to see, okay, let's not live that way? Come on, how many know that God has better instead of bitter for you? Amen? This is what we're going to look at as the kingdom believers because um, Proverbs 14.10 says, The heart knows its own bitterness and no strangers can share in its joy. Your heart knows where your bitterness lies. Your heart right now is telling you this is where the bitter spot is and this is how we're going to take care of it. This is biblical healing. Number one, we're going to walk in repentance. 
The enemy wants us to walk this way towards being bitter and thriving on it and letting it get inside deep. And we're going to say, no, we're going this way. Lord, I repent for all that complaining. I repent for all that unforgiveness. I repent in, in living my life in the darkness. I want Jesus. I repent of that. Ephesians 4.31 says to uh, just lay there and let God remove the bitterness from you. Is that what it says to do? No, it says to, that you personally, Christian, has to do what? Get rid. Get rid of it all. God is waiting for you and me to take a step into our prayer closet or wherever we need to be and say, God, I can't do this on my own. I've got to let you remove this. I can't do it. I need to get rid of it. And he will. He'll meet us there. How do we do that? We stop the blame game. We've got to stop the blame game. Blaming this, blaming that, just take it to God. Your spouse isn't the problem. Take it to God. Stop the blame game. Admit that you can't shake it by yourself. Remember we just sang and worshiped that Jesus is with us. Yes, it's not right, it's not fair, it's wrong, all those things. And you're like, but Jim, you don't know why I'm bitter or what I've gone through. I know what I've gone through and how I can stay bitter because the enemy is right there at my door saying, let's do it this way. I know, believe me, I got my own stuff. So I might not know yours, but you know yours. Your heart knows your bitterness. So you admit you can't shake it off. Let God do that for you in prayer. It's bigger than me. Father, please lift it. I can't carry this on my own. You're going to have to remove it. And the good news is he will. Number five is you got to trust that God has it. And that's the toughest one. Why? Because I was just telling someone before service that a lot of times I will pray and I'll leave it and then I walk away and 30 minutes later, I realize it's right back in my hands. Anyone ever had that happen? Why did I pick it back up? I'm supposed to leave it. I'm supposed to trust God with it. How do you do that? That's between you and him. He's there for you. He's there for you. For with freedom, with healing. Was it, was it easy that Naomi lost her husband and two sons? No. It was traumatic. We could just take our chairs in a big circle here and talk about all of our trauma. But I don't want to. Bitterness, ah, I want this kind of water. Now, I'm not telling you not to talk it out. Sometimes you need to talk it out. You need someone to sit there and say, okay, tell me everything. And then let's give it to God. Let it all out. But let's give it to God. Not the person who's going to go, they did what to you? Tell me more. Really? Trust God with it, and then you've got to personally. Why? Because I know this. You've got to put your focus on God, His work in your life. You've got to say, no matter what's happened, no matter where I've been, the King of kings and Lord of lords loves me. He's got me. He's got me by his mighty right hand, and he is not letting go. He is going to stay with me. His eyes are on me, and I am going to trust him, and I'm going to live free and light and loving in God. And that's what Naomi learned. She learned that her hardship and pain was turned into her destiny with God because God sent someone to help her, her daughter-in-law, Ruth. If you've never heard the story, let me complete the story. So when Naomi was heading to Bethlehem, she told Orpah, her two daughter-in-laws, you all need to go find you a new husband. You need to have kids. You need to go do your thing. I can't be here for you. I've got nothing to give you. Orpah went, okay. I'm going to go, and, and that's what they would do back then. Do you realize they didn't have a living? 
They didn't have someone to take care of them. They went back to their father's house until a man would say, come and be part of me and my uh, land. This, this way, you got to remember the context here. It was a big deal for Orpha to go, okay, I'm going to go and be with my family. And for Ruth to actually turn and see her mother-in-law walking towards a place she didn't know, she was now going to become an outsider because she's outside of Moab. She's going to become um, someone that no one knows or cares about. And she's going to be with a lady who doesn't have any money. So she says, but she here's what she does. She realizes God that she's seen through Naomi needs to be her God. And she goes and falls on her, her, her face before Naomi and says, Naomi, from this moment on, you are your people are going to be my people. Your God is going to be my God. I'm going to leave. You never leave me. You're never going to let me go. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to take care of you. And they went together. It gets bigger than that. Because Ruth's problem turned into provision because they get settled in. Now we're on chapter 3. Again, this is only four chapters. It's a great read. You take it from Eugene Peterson's message paraphrase, and he tells it in modern English. Beautiful story. Ruth 2, 2 says this, And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose Eyes, I find favor. So now she's saying, okay, it's time to get up. It's time to go to work. It's time to get busy because i got to take care of myself and I've got to take care of my mother-in-law. So I'm going to go out in the fields. I'm going to go behind the people who are getting their wheat, their grain. It was barley season. And I'm just going to collect what I can. We'll live on it. We'll sell it. We'll give it away. But I'm going to work. Her obedience in doing that is met by God's supernatural help. Because guess what? Supernaturally, supernaturally, she ends up in Boaz's field. Ruth comes home and Naomi's like, where did you go today? And he, she said, I went to some field they were given, that we were able to follow them and his name's Boaz. Boaz? Wait, he's part of Elimelech's family. In fact, let me look at some, I don't know if she had, she had through memory or she asked people, but she figured out Elimelech is the one who is the, what's called the kingsman redeemer, the person, the man in the family who is supposed to take care of all the widows or, or the fields or the property that they came back to. She said, you went to Boaz's field? Remember, Ruth didn't do it because she was wanting to look for herself a man. She didn't do it because she was trying to. She did it because she had dedicated, she had given the, the it's called the chesed love of God, the Hebrew love of God to take care of Naomi, to put herself and say, I'm going to protect you. We're going to do this together. And God supernaturally met her in that field. Take time and read that amazing story because it's beautiful. The Lord orders your steps. You might say, well, why am I doing this? Because you're obeying Jesus. But what am I doing? Because you're obeying Jesus. But I want, nope, obey Jesus. And all of a sudden, as you obey, as you obey, he starts supernaturally, supernaturally behind the scenes moving the players. Now, men, before we end, and, and I, need to, I need to tell you about a little bit about Boaz, okay? Because all you ladies looking for a man and all you men becoming men, we got to learn from Boaz. Boaz, the Bible says, we're going to look at this, Ruth 2, 1 says this, Now, Naomi had a relative on her husband's side. He was a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech. That word there, man of standing, means that he was a man of noble character. I don't even know that if I have to say anything more than that in that scenario because men, you and I, we have got to be men of noble character. 
The world around us is looking for men to rise up and be men of noble character. And I'm calling it out in you right now. And ladies, I'm telling you, don't even look at him. Uh, don't even talk to him unless you know he is a man of noble character. Come on. And if you forget that point, come up to some of the ladies in here who might have be a little more seasoned and ask them why you should do that. Pastor Lisa says, please. <laughs> I am sure her counseling level would be a lot less for women if we men would stand up and be men of noble character. So number one, he was that type of man. Number two, I love this. He was a man who took time to discover Ruth's story. She's just out in the field getting, month, getting uh, food. And she look, he looks out and he says, who's that lady? Well, what's she about? What, who is she? What is she doing? What? Women, ladies, do you guys, do you all like it when we are men who actually listen to your story? Now, sometimes it's a little longer story. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just, sorry, Deb. But we listen. We want to discover. It's not one ear and out the other. Yeah, uh-huh, 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 as we click through the TV. It's turning and listening. A man of noble character is one who will listen. Number three. He demonstrates remarkable generosity. In fact, did you get this? He actually tells the men that are working for him to take his grain and throw it out so that Ruth would have extra grain to find. Men, we need to become men of generosity. No matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. Ladies, this is one for you because Ruth was not only a hard worker, she was a woman of noble character. She was there working with them. She was part of them. She wasn't just grabbing it all for herself. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone in here, we need to be people, men and women. The culture is begging Christians to be men and women of generosity. Come on. You and I need to be the most generous people in the world. We're giving the light, the love of Jesus. Number four, he prays for her. I love this. There's a little part in there. We're not going to have time to turn to it, but he prays for her boldness and strength. Wow. We need to take time, men, even after today, and say, you know what, honey, let me just pray for your strength. Let me pray for your boldness. Let me pray what God has for you and take that leadership role and pray over them, support them in that way. That's what Boaz did. He prayed over her. And get this, number five, he calls out. He wasn't threatened by a, she was a hard worker. Again, she's working morning all day. She's going at it. He wasn't threatened by that. He was, and this was a whole different culture than what we have today. He wasn't threatened by her. He loved her enough that he calls her a woman of noble character. He said, you know what? I call that out in you. Let's grab hands together and be a man and woman of noble character together. Don't walk behind me. You're not walking in front of me because I'm going to be right there with you. You pray for me. I pray for you. And we will live out the destiny of God. Now, this is all Boaz was doing behind the scenes watching Ruth. And in chapter 3, we find out that she returns home, finds out that that's her family, redeem, uh, family redeemer, kin, kinsman redeemer. Naomi teaches her. Naomi has a spark of non-bitterness now. She's like, there's hope. I'm turning to God. I'm home with the people of God. And she becomes full of hope. And she says, this is what you need to do. And they walk through the marital uh, ritual for the Jewish people of that day. Ruth does it. Long story short, 
we have a beautiful happy ending between Ruth and Boaz. Amen? How many love happy endings? All right. Yay for happy endings. But the ending gets bigger and better. Remember at the beginning of my talk how we I said that God has purpose and plan for you and you're you might feel ordinary, but you've got to move into becoming a man and woman of noble character. Remember, I said that this is your part of this great story. In their ordinariness, in their, their barley fields, and who they were, here's the, here's the grand kicker at the end of the movie if we were watching it. Boaz and Ruth, their son, Obed, was King David's grandfather. Fourteen generations later, I'm getting chills, in the land of Bethlehem, a baby was born in the, in the, in the land of David, the city of David, that is Christ the King, your King and my King. His great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmother was Ruth, and his great-great-grandfather was Boaz. And that's how God uses you and uses me to change generations. It all started when Ruth said, I'm going to show this incredible love to this lady. Would you all stand with me? So many great points. But I'm going to end today with an invitation to you. Number one invitation is if you've never invited Jesus. You know, this is all about Jesus. We can't do anything without him. He takes away bitterness. He makes us the person of nobility, noble character. We can't do anything without him. It starts with Jesus. I'm going to invite you, if you've never dedicated, you've never, you see, Ruth had to fall down to, to Naomi and say, I give you this love. I choose your God. I, today I choose your God. It took that. Today you need to make a choice if you've never invited Jesus into your life, today's your day. Make the choice today. Bind yourself to the Word of God. Call out on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. You will become part of this incredible kingdom life. Number two invitation for some of you out there is to get rid of bitterness finally. Oh, let it go, folks. If it starts to well up a little bit and taste bitter, get rid of it again. Give it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. And number three, I want you to consider. Everyone in here, young people, this is for you. Older folks, seasoned folks, this is for all of us. Consider how God is at work in your daily life. Your ordinary becomes extraordinary. Supernaturally, you're changing things. God's changing things through you, through prayer, through obedience. Are you allowing Him? Or are you letting Him? With all eyes closed, head bowed, if you've never accepted the unconditional love of God before, and the Holy Spirit is knocking at your door saying, today's the day. Would you raise your hand? Would you look at me? And I'm going to pray with you. Anyone in the room that has not said, to, I want to surrender my entire life. I'm tired of doing it on my own. I want Jesus. as the Holy Spirit ministers to you. As you decide to make that choice and you want someone to walk with you, we're here with you. On the website, on the app, 
you can call the church phone. We want to walk with you and teach you what discipleship of Jesus looks like. We're here. We're available for you. Maybe it's the bitterness part that you need to pray through today. Maybe it's your life purpose. I'm going to pray over you, and then if you feel like you need to have a little more prayer, our prayer warriors are standing up here. Come and let us lay hands on you and pray with you. We'll linger for a little bit after church. And if you feel led to come up, we will be here with you. But I want to do a general prayer. I want you to leave it here. Don't pick it back up. Lord Jesus, I pray for boldness for everyone in this room right now to let go of bitterness. Bitterness of the past, bitterness of relationships, maybe even bitterness that you... They don't feel you were there when you were there. Whatever the bitterness they're holding on to, let them release it now in Jesus' name. Just ask Jesus to forgive you, to let it go. Leave it here. Walk out smiling and full of joy, knowing God's got you, just like that beautiful baby Wells knew his mama would be there. He might cry loud enough, but hey, his mama's going to be there, and God wants you to know you might need to do some crying out to him. He is there for you. Woo! That's a release for someone in here. Cry out to God. And finally, Lord, I pray you would release destiny in people's lives. Let them see you leading them with your mighty right arm into a great destiny, into a great legacy. Generations are now changed because of what you're doing in and through us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. And everyone said... Amen. Let's give him a great big hand clap. God, we praise you for today. If you want prayer, come on up. If not, have a blessed day. We'll see you next Sunday.